Let me recount to you, my fellow exoracists. Uh, wait, that doesn't sound right. My fellow exoracers, this is the story of Exocup number 132, fittingly named Exocup, 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 Exocup at Byrogues. For those of you who don't know what an Exocup is, there are two Exocups every Saturday, and they are in the format of a Trackmania Cup of the Day. The biggest difference is that each division holds 32 players rather than 64, and instead of getting one shot at the map each round, you have a minute and 30 seconds to set the best time you can. The elimination process is the same, where four people go out each round until 16 remain, then only two people get knocked out until 8 remain, where there is one elimination per round until the winner is crowned. Between Exocup number 132 and the last one I covered, being number 83, I did manage to achieve several Division 1 badges, being a token of recognition for finishing in the top 5 of the most prestigious division in the event. But I'll cover those in the future, and with my current upload rate of these Exocup videos, all of you will be in retirement homes by the next time I release the next one. However, this Exocup is special because it was held on the very last Saturday of the year 2023, on December 30th. So with 2024 on the horizon, and hype for update 2.0, this was an exciting time for ExoRacer. With that said, the cup started and I did not have a good start at all. It took me two entire minutes to finish a single time with the super weird geometry of the map, but at least I gave myself some free time save at the end. After that point though, I got more comfortable with gameplay and managed to implement some reattaches on the rope section. With less than a minute to go, I was barely out of Division 1 territory and I was trying my best to enter the top 32. Luckily, I closed out a run with less than 30 seconds to spare and I managed to squeeze my way into that coveted division. I decided to check the leaderboards to see how far I was from the best times and Klossel sniped first place just as qualifiers came to an end. Oh, I, I think there's something wrong with this map. People immediately deduced that Klossel had discovered a skip, and then the floodgates opened. I checked the Discord to see if I could find the skip, and people were kind enough to leak the secret. So now, it was go time. One problem, the skip was hard. Really hard. So much so that I knew that people were dumb enough to go for it, and I only needed a consistently average time to make it to the next round. Well, would you look at that, someone didn't finish. More people who didn't finish, wow, who could have seen this coming? Well, looks like everyone did finish this round, but these guys probably just finished a bad no-reset run banking on the fact that they might hit the skip. Okay, the remaining people probably didn't even go for the skip and just got unlucky, and we're already in the top 16, wow. At this point in the cup, I was already pretty comfortable and consistent with the intended route for the map, and after I started round 5 with an almost immediate personal best, I decided it wouldn't hurt to start familiarizing myself with the skip. Needless to say, it didn't go so well, so I thought I would stick with the regular method, until I dropped 5 places in 10 seconds. Then I was on the bubble with 30 seconds left in the round. After half a minute of pure desperation skip attempts, I managed to survive to play another day. I got another personal best in round 6 with 30 seconds remaining, so I spent my time watching others attempt the skip to see how it was being done. Luckily for me, the last silhouette gave a good visual of what to do, and look at these bozos not managing to finish a single time this late into the cup. Now with 12 people remaining, and how close I was getting to elimination with a time 2 frames behind my PB, it was time for me to commit to the skip. You may recognize some of these failed attempts from earlier in the video, and wouldn't you know it, I didn't land at a single time here. Luckily for me, my backup normal run was just enough to stay in, giving me another chance at swinging purgatory. With 10 people remaining, I got another personal best with just under a minute left in the round, leaving me a decent chunk of time to attempt the skip. 
This entire time, I was complaining about my inability of doing the skip on the Discord, and I once again asked how the skip was possible. With 10 seconds left to go in the round, being one spot away from elimination, I finally managed to hit it. The ending was slow, but I knew it was possible for me to do now, and I was hoping to get more consistent with it. Only one elimination per round now, seven rounds to go until the winner emerges. In round 9, I needed to do the normal route to at least finish a run with 35 seconds remaining, and after slowly dropping ranks throughout the round, another massively close call saved me from elimination. I'm glad no one managed a super good normal run like in the previous round. This time, I finished a normal run right away so I could worry less about it later. Looks like that wasn't necessary though, since I landed it with a terrible beginning but somehow still cut my best time down. I even hit it again with 20 seconds to go, and I began to think that maybe I hit my stride and I could get another badge. Well, I'm getting a badge, let's fucking go. Round 12 started with two super good skip attempts, but neither went far enough by just barely. A lot of promising skip attempts occurred here, but I had to resort to another terrible normal run as a last resort in the hopes that the only person below me stays without a finish. Looks like that was unnecessary though, as with 15 seconds to go, I would fling past the saw and zoom to safety. And looks like we got a non-finisher within the top 5, so it wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> Only three others stood between myself and victory. In round 13, I figured that I overstayed my welcome and didn't even bother with setting a regular run. I would full send skip attempts, and it paid off in the last third of the round when I set a brand new personal best. Top three was more or less secured, and all I had to do was survive one more round for a chance at my third win. Shockingly, I hit the skip on only my second attempt of the round and I had guaranteed myself a spot in the finals. I decided to continue building my consistency for the last round though, obviously. Hold, hold on a second, all remaining players had actually hit the skip in a round for the first time ever. Maybe I wasn't as safe as I originally thought. A cool feature about making it into the top 5 of an EXO Cup is that you get to see player icons instead of silhouettes for once. The drastic shift in aesthetic may throw you off, but you get used to it if you can survive the first round it takes effect. So whenever I saw Arisian make it to the rope, I wanted him to fail the skip. Unfortunately for me, he seemed pretty consistent at getting the height required to perform it, so to no one's surprise, he overtook me and once I missed the skip by mere pixels, there was nothing I could do but look at the clock ticking down. It was a good run. You thought that was the only perspective you were going to get, didn't you? Getting so far in an EXO Cup for me is an event few and far between these days, but the fact that they still happen despite my inactivity gives me hope that I can one day accomplish my third win. I still have a few cups to cover and Maybe it won't take me another 6 months to make another video this time. I think I'll start reducing my workload by not covering the other EXO Cup from the week, unless I did particularly well in that one as well. So with that said, I'll see you in the next EXO Cup recap.